What's up, everybody? I'm Ryan. Thank you so much for joining me here today. So, you know, when you're shopping online for car parts and you order a whole bunch of them and then they actually arrive and you realize that you've got to spend the time to put them all in, that's kind of the situation that I'm in right now. So I thought it would be great to make a video that shows all the different parts that I've got waiting to go in, give you a little tease at some of the videos are going to be upcoming, and then maybe even ask your opinion on what parts I should put in next. Let's take a look. All right, this is quite a pile of parts that I've got here. Some of these I ordered at the end of last year. Some of them are brand new from this year. Uh, I have some of them are sort of like performance or cosmetic enhancements, and some of them are just solving some mechanical problems that I've got. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of these. If you saw my last video, you know that I just went and installed a 1982 Mustang GT hood scoop on my 87LX. That was one part of the uh, cosmetic enhancements that I had planned. This is one of the other parts here. This is uh, an SVE grill eliminator kit. So this is a fiberglass piece. Uh, basically you cut out the grill on the front of your car and you put uh, where the Ford emblem is and you put this in. This looks like it's a pretty simple install. You have to hacksaw your front bumper cover up, but then it looks like this just goes in in place with some double-sided tape and a couple of uh, push pins or screws from the top. I'm actually gonna take that one step further. I do have some automotive bonding epoxy for fiberglass and urethane parts, and I'm gonna use that to put it in. Another part that I have here, this is a Cervini's bumper filler kit. So if you know on the 87 to 93 Fox Body Mustang on the front bumper cover, there is a, a gap where the license plate goes. Uh, and this is designed to fill that. If I live here, we don't need a front license plate. I'm actually not 100% sure that I want to put this in. This was a part that I had ordered last year and I thought was going to be really cool, but I've kind of eyeballed it and held it up a few times and I'm not really sure about it. So um, first thing I'm going to do is put that grill um, eliminator kit on and then I'll just sort of see with this one and see what I think about it. If you've got an opinion on this, I'd love to see your comments uh, below. Let me know what you think. The next batch of parts here are actually kind of solving a problem. So this car might look lowered, but it's actually not lowered. Uh, what it is, is it's got, it was originally a four cylinder car. So it's got four cylinder springs in the front. And of course I did a V8 swap on it and it sits low because it's also got a lot of miles. So the springs are kind of worn out. And so because of that, the handling leaves a little bit to be desired on bumpy roads, the caster and the camber are a little bit wonky. So what I have right here, this is a Maximum Motorsports uh, caster camber plates. Let's take a peek at these. I haven't even opened them yet. Oh, they're all sealed up really good. I actually have these on another car and they are beautiful, beautiful pieces. Look at this. Heavy duty, heavy duty stuff. So looking forward to Looking forward to getting this installed in the car and getting a proper alignment finally. And uh, along with that, I also do have a few sort of uh, homework projects for it. Uh, I've got some inner and outer tie rod ends for the front of the car. And then uh, new wheel cylinders for the rear drum brakes and uh, brake hose for the front end. This car actually still has the original, not original, but this still has the four cylinder brakes on the front, the 10 inch brakes. The 87 to 93 uh, four cylinder cars had the same brakes as the 79 to 86 V8 cars. All right, and now we're at some of the new things that I've ordered for this year. So let's take a peek at what is in these boxes. Ah, yes. So you might have noticed that this is a T-top car. And I've had the car since 1994. And ever since then, the T-tops have leaked. And so I have finally gone and bought 
the weather stripping kits from late model restoration. These are the seals that go on the T-tops themselves. This is the seal that covers up where the headliner uh, goes onto the body around the T-top openings. I actually also need to put a new headliner on the car, so that'll be exciting. And these are the headliner retaining pins. I don't know if the T-top cars use the same retaining pins as the, um, like the solid roof cars, but we will find out. And uh, this is a T-top repair manual. I ordered this also from Late Model Restoration. Therm, or a radiator cap. Uh, this is uh, new upper radiator brackets. So I have a contour fan in this car and I mounted that fan using the original four cylinder upper radiator mounts, which actually have a bracket on it for an electric fan. But one of the things that's in this kit in one of these boxes is that new contour fan mounting kit from late model restoration. And I'm really excited to get into that and take a peek at it. More weather stripping. This is the body door opening weather stripping. And I don't know what this is at all. There's two of them. These are the felt for to help also to seal up the T-tops. It's kind of nice actually. It even looks like it comes with the rivet so that we can get them put in properly. So that's pretty exciting. Two of those. And that means that this box here must be my fan mounting kit, which is pretty exciting. Let's take a peek. So one of the reasons I ordered this fan mounted kit was the way that I have my fan mounted is not great. Um, I actually have the top of the fan mounted to the upper radiator mount brackets. I'm using the four cylinder ones, so there's a, they look a little bit different. There's some room on them to mount a fan. But the bottom of the fan is literally mounted to the rad support. So it's a little bit farther away from the radiator than it should be. And I'm just using these like little aluminum strips that I cut out of, uh, out of a sheet of aluminum. It doesn't look great. So this kit is going to allow me to have a much more secure mounting location, uh, as well as just look a little bit cleaner. Uh, and the other thing that I'm really excited about is I think it also allows you to mount the overflow container on it. And we're about to find that out. So, so yeah, that fan mounted kit comes with an overflow container. So I already own this overflow container, but I own it in the polished silver. And this kit comes with this black tank. This is great. This car is like a matte semi-gloss black anyway. So I think this kit will look really, really cool in it. And these are the brackets here, actually. What do I think of these? They're a little lighter weight than I thought, but they're stamped really cleanly. And uh, the finish on them looks like it's pretty decent. Can't tell if it's paint, it must just be paint. It's nice, the bends are really crisp on it. This looks like a pretty nice kit. And, and I'm thinking that this might be my mount for the overflow container, but let's take a peek through the instructions here. These are little mounting brackets that come with the overflow container. Overflow hose to go from the radiator to the overflow container. Let's just take this out and take a peek through the instructions. It's got all kinds of hardware here. It's got the wiring pigtails for the two fans, a uh, little like speed nuts to mount everything up. It's even got uh, all of the mounting hardware, which is pretty cool actually. That's a really complete looking kit. I'm really excited about that. Okay, instructions. Does it mount the overflow container? Yes, it does. So in these instructions for the LRS Contour MK, this is the, uh, the Contour Fan Mounting Bracket from Late Model Restoration. It looks like it does include instructions and some of the parts to actually mount this um, overflow container, either 
it's a little bit unclear. I'll have to look a little bit closer. Uh, I do have a whole video on this on this kit uh, planned that's upcoming, but it does look like this overflow container will either mount to these brackets or or maybe uh, right to the fan itself. So that's actually really exciting. What I have right now is uh, I've actually mounted my overflow container onto the trans cooler fittings on the radiator. It's hold it's held it's holding and it uh, it's been fine for me, but I'm just not really happy with it. So. That is that part. And then this is also from Late Model Restoration. And you can probably already tell what this is, but it is a new radiator. And this is also the black finish radiator. This is the new black finish radiator. Whew, look at that. Oh, that's nice. I like that a lot. Oh, wow. So the radiator that I have in the car now is actually also an SVE radiator, but it's a silver one. And to be honest, it leaked after about two years. So what I'm having, and the reason that I'm replacing it is because I have a, a leak somewhere between the, the fins and the tank. Uh, but honestly, uh, this piece looks like it's much higher quality than the original that I got a few years ago, maybe maybe four years ago. So these mounting tabs uh, at the top where the radiator brackets on, these are much cleaner looking than mine. Just fit and finish in general looks, uh, looks much better on this piece. So that's awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me here and going through my mail with me. The next video that I have planned is going to be to install this radiator as well as that contour fan mounted kit and the new overflow container. But if there's one of these projects that really stood out to you that you're really excited to see, please leave a comment below and uh, let me know what it is and then I'll uh, do my best to adjust my schedule. As well, you might as well subscribe to the channel while you're here so that you don't miss that video when it does come out. So thanks so much for joining me and have a great day.